Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to talk about a very common topic in gynecology that is polycystic ovarian disease that is PCOD or PCOS, polycystic ovarian syndrome. First thing we're going to talk about in PCOS is what may be the causes of PCOD. See, there are many things involved in causes of PCOD. There are environmental factors, genetic factors, but most importantly in all of the pathophysiology, there's one thing which is commonly seen in most of the patients is obesity. So this obesity, whenever there's obesity in the female, it means there's a lot amount of fat cells, that is adipocytes. These adipocytes are not just cells, they even have endocrinological functions. That is, they have a lot of hormone producing action. So which hormones do they produce? Mainly they're involved in leptin, adiponectin and a few cytokines. The speciality or the problematic thing associated with these three hormones is all of them together bring about insulin resistance in most of the cells by hampering with the insulin signaling pathways. So what does this insulin resistance means? It means the receptors on the cells will not be responsive to the insulin. Insulin is present, but the cells are not responding to that insulin. That means these cells cannot uptake the glucose into the cell. Insulin is there, glucose is there, cell is not able to uptake the glucose into that cell. This happens in the follicles of ovary also. So once the glucose is not entering into this follicles, these follicles stop growing or they have less, less growth. That is why these follicles will become small in size, they are immature, non-functional. One more thing, see if there is insulin resistance, there is no glucose uptake, but there is a lot of, in that means there is a lot of glucose left outside the cell. So there will be increase in the glucose levels. That means the body senses there is a condition of hyperglycemia. So by feedback mechanism, it starts secreting more and more of insulin. This excess of insulin again works in two different ways. Hyperinsulinemia can lead to a condition called as acanthosis nigricans. This acanthosis nigricans is a dermatological manifestation of hyperinsulinemia. It is seen as black velvety kind of appearance is seen especially in the skin of the axilla, nape of the neck, back of the neck. So this this is how acanthosis nigricans presents as. Now there is too much of insulin this ins too much of insulin, excess of insulin by some idiopathic mechanism leads to increase in the LH hormone secretion that is luteinizing hormone secretion from the pituitary. Now you should know that whenever there is increase of LH hormone it acts on the theca cells of the ovary and these theca cells produce the hormones that is the androgens. Yes, you should remember that even in the females Androgens are produced even normally, but this too much excess of LH is causing theca cell hyperplasia and because of that there is excess of androgen. See these androgens can do two things. First thing is they are, uh, normally when androgens are produced, the two important androgens responsible are epiandrostenedione and testosterone. Now. Normally this testosterone, if it's secreted normally in the female, it will go to the granulosa cell and it will be converted into estrogen. This happens normally also. Now excess of androgen is produced, some of it still goes to the granulosa cell, but there's not too much of granulosa cells and hence only little amount of it is converted into estrogen. The rest of the uh, epiandrostenedione, it goes to the fat cells. And remember there's abundance of fat cells because of obesity in this female. So, and this abundance of uh, epiandrostenedione will be converted into estrone. So, estrone is increased, estrogen is also increased, but the amount of estrone with respect to estrogen is more. So, the estrone is to estrogen ratio will be increased. So this is one of the findings, laboratory findings. So, this, uh, this is the part of the androgen which is converted to other forms of estrogen. But what about the rest of the androgen? Some of the androgen binds to something called as SHBG that is the sex hormone binding globulin which is synthesized by the liver. See there is 
def it there's a finite amount of shbg present secreted by the liver in a normal person now this excess of androgen some of it binds to shbg but the rest of the androgen which is not binding to shbg is seen as free androgen so whenever there's free hormone it means it has to be active it becomes active it's functional and because most of it is binding to shbg shbg level in the body falls this is one more laboratory laboratory value finding which is seen in pcod what about this free androgen which is present this free androgen which is present leads to hirsutism so hirsutism the patient mainly present with hair changes that is she'll start having a hair on the upper lip the chin and there'll be voice changes but it's just hirsutism it is not virilization which is occurring because this amount of androgen is quite less one more thing that is happening because of this increased androgen levels is anovulation there's oligomenorrhea in the beginning and then it goes for amenorrhea later so these are the findings now whenever there's anovulation that means there's no dysmenorrhea okay there's no dysmenorrhea because there's no rupture of the graphene follicles there's no release of blood into the peritoneal cavity causing dysmenorrhea and one more thing that's happening because of all these things this infertility now again see there's ra raised estrogen levels in the body that's why whenever there's raised estrogen there's decrease fsh because of negative feedback but this raised estrogen also leads to increased lh and again there's ls surge and this leads to the continuation of the vicious cycle which had started before so once it starts it's a continuous vicious cycle now this excessive estrogen has a endometrial proliferative activity this lot amount of estrogen initially it leads to proliferation then it can lead to anaplasia that is why these people uh, patients of pcos may later present with endometrial ca because there's too much of endometrial proliferation and there is unopposed estrogen there's only estrogen see there's an ovulatory cycle that's why there's no rupture of graphene follicle there's no formation of corpus luteum and there's no progesterone as such or very less amount of progesterone to combat the excessive estrogen so there it's as good as unopposed estrogen action on the uh, endometrium so they are very good candidates for developing endometrial carcinoma in later years so hope this video was useful thank you for watching